It's still catching up. The dogs are finally tired. For now, they'll take a power nap, and then they're going to go crazy again. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change gears. We're going to talk about the stock market, which has been shitting the bed for the last couple of weeks. You don't panic sell. Do not sell into panic. Uh, that's how you lose money. Um, is it painful right now? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Um, but when you sell down and buy into the panic, that is when shit goes bad. Uh, I actually added money uh, the other day. It went up, and then it went back down. That's going to happen. If you believe in the long term... And in, by market standards, long term means one year plus. Uh, short term is less than a year. A lot of people use the term medium term means like just under a year or six months to a year. Um, some people may use them completely differently when they say long term or they'll say super long term, meaning well over a year, whatever the case is. If you believe in the long term or super long term, I don't know how you sell this market. Uh, the Fed has stated ad nauseum. Go look it up. It's Latin. Ad nauseum. The Fed has stated that they will keep rates at zero until 2023. That means there is nowhere for you to make money except the stock market, basically. Or the equity markets in general. Maybe debt, but who the fuck wants to touch that? I don't, I sure don't. Equity markets are the only place you can really make money. Real estate's going to be all over the place for a little while. For a good long while. At least until we get a vaccine. Um, markets, the really the only place. You're not getting any money in a CD. You know, even even before COVID, when... Um, the Fed was trying to raise rates. You still weren't getting any kind of a return on a bank CD. Um, even jumbo, jumbo CDs, you're getting maybe a quarter of a percent, maybe fifth, uh, half a percent. Bullshit. Uh, back in back when I was in college, between I would say yeah, I would say two thousand and six or seven, six or seven, something like that. When I was in college, you could get a jumbo CD that's $100,000 or more and get like a 5% return on it. This is before the Great Recession. You can't come close to that now. Um, I will anecdotally say that during the recession of the nineteen mid-1980s, <laughs> you could get a certificate of deposit um, at about 14%. Uh, annual return. Uh, that's because inflation was rampant. Uh, but imagine if you had had the foresight to get a fixed, like, 30-year jumbo CD in 1985 for 14% APR. Um, you'd be sitting pretty. That is, if the bank didn't renegotiate that rate, which they probably would have. But still, it's funny to think about. Um, Yeah, so there's nowhere to make money right now. The economy is shitty. The Fed is propping up the equity markets. It's the only place to make money. Some people don't like that. Okay. Um... A new term that has come about within the last couple of months, you know, in the beginning, in March, April, even May, people were talking about a V recovery, V-shaped recovery in the economy and the markets, a W, an L, Uh, then they came up with a Nike swoosh, a check mark. Um, I apologize, my allergies are are a little bit uh, 
active today. Ragweed season. So we heard all these things. V, W, U, L, um, Nike swoosh, check mark, whatever. And then within the last few weeks or so, uh, once people finally realized that the markets were not going to be reflective of the economy itself, have started to call it a K-shaped recovery, which basically means the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. That's a little bit oversimplified, but the people that are invested get richer and the people that aren't invested get poorer, which is really arguing semantics if you're saying that's different from rich get richer and poor get poorer. But there are plenty of people that are in the market that are not, strictly speaking, rich. And there are plenty of people that aren't in the market that are certainly not poor. But sure, if you want to oversimplify, call it rich get richer, poor get poor. But regardless, K-shaped recovery. If you're invested, you're making your money back. If you're not invested, you are probably in as much of a bind now, if not more so, than you were in 2007, 8, and 9. Uh, and that's a crying ass shame. And I still would submit that a big part of that, aside from the president being himself, for really lack of anything else to say, um, is Congress. Congress is not doing anything anything. Congress did, or at least the House, managed to put forth a bill and send it to the Senate to prevent a government shutdown. So they are all still getting paid. They all have jobs. Yes, government shutdown or lack of government, preventing a government shutdown means that they can theoretically continue to negotiate on another stimulus bill to save everybody that's lost so much from COVID. That's true. But they're also keeping themselves employed and paid. Um, So if they don't come up with another COVID stimulus bill, that means they kept themselves employed and paid while the rest of us continued to suffer. And if you didn't watch my last video... That does include me, because I, along with 8,999 other New York City employees, are being furloughed. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, More will probably follow if the mayor can't get funding either from the state or from the federal government or renegotiate with the unions. But the mayor hasn't made himself any friends anywhere on either side of the aisle. So I'm not overly hopeful or optimistic. Um, And I've said this before, and a number of people don't like my political commentary, and that's totally fine. Mute me or just don't watch. Um, And my response is the same every time. Who the hell wants to hear me, you know, play-by-play gack when it's like all the same shit? Uh, Anyway. So, yeah, that's, that's where we are. Um, that's where we may very well be for the foreseeable future. Uh, and you and I and anybody and everybody else have the absolute right to be fucking pissed off about that. Um, and the only way to change that is to go to the voting booths in November. I don't care what party you're affiliated with. I don't care where you live. I don't care who you vote for. But if you're unhappy and you have a fair few reasons to be unhappy and you have the right to be unhappy, if you are unhappy or if you just want to change, go to the voting booths. 
And again, I don't care who you vote for. I don't care if you vote red, blue, purple, green, pink, Mickey Mouse. You could write in Mickey Mouse. Because that's not all that different from what we've got in Washington already. And I'm not talking about any one person. I'm talking about mm, several hundred. Um, Because obviously the Senate, there's two per state. But Congress is quite a bit larger. Or I should say the House is quite a bit larger. Uh, House is like 400 and... uh, I don't know, like 400 and something. I think it's like 430 something. It's a lot. And that's based on state populations and the census, which is why the census is important, even though I never, ever, ever fill out the census. Because I'm from New York City. Like, who gives a fuck about me? Nobody. New York City is always going to go blue. Uh, It's getting a little bit... Well, I wouldn't say too blue, but it's getting a little socialist blue, which is... uh, Really should be a separate party. The two-party system is just... There's no room for purples... There's no room for greens. There's no room for whatever the hell color democratic socialists are, like AOC and Bernie. Um, yeah, I mean, they shouldn't. Nor, nor do I think they would like to be just lumped in with the rest of um, declared Democrats. Uh, and many declared Democrats don't want Bernie and AOC to be lumped in with them. <laughs> uh, anyway, on to the next video at some point.